Well, good day to everybody. Happy Thursday, uh, the 15th of September, which is really cool. We're halfway through the month, and uh, my birthday is coming up the 29th, so I expect a lot of big gifts from a lot of people. 929, man, is a very cool number. So, what are we going to talk about today? Um, we are wearing a Stones shirt, so I know everybody loves the Beatles, and I do too, but we're going a little Stones today for a buddy of mine, Dirk Rieger, so uh, he loves the Stones. So we're going to talk today about Mitsubishi ion exchange resins and why Mitsubishi ion exchange resins, because they offer a phenomenal amount of choices for you to do chromatography, and it's all about choices. And um, what's great about ion exchange resins is right from the get-go, they can be used for all types of compounds, uh, both small and large molecule. They can be used in a complete array of solvents, whether they're aqueous or organic. Uh, great pH stability, 1 to 14. Um, they have a huge amount of functionalities that... Um, that are offered <laughs> um, for both pharmaceutical and non-pharmaceutical applications for small and large molecules, proteins, peptides, oligos, amino acids. We see increased loading, increased selectivity. Uh, there's no risk for endotoxin contamination per FDA guidelines. That's a big one. Um, what's also really, really great is that they, you can clean them. They are reusable, regeneratable for a very long lifetime. So some of the ones that um, we want to talk about, um, they have ones for reverse phase and uh, a, one that's very, very popular is their HP20. It's a very well-known industry product and HP20SS, which is smaller. Um, what's really cool about Mitsubishi is they also offer a wide range of their products in HPLC column so that you can do basic method development on it and then scale that functionality all the way up to full process. And this is always very important, especially if you're in an industrial environment, if you're doing manufacturing, this is a way to really work. And so I recommend these resins as a good starting point. There's so many of them. Uh, basically, one of the things that we want to do is create a cool spice rack also so that you can have these on your bench for when you want to do chromatography um, or just simple purification. Um, so um, they offer reverse phase. Um, H, like I said, HP20 is a great one. And then they also offer on these reverse phase uh, they call them more aromatic. Um, they also offer food grade. So if you're doing juices and wines, etc., these are products that you can easily utilize for uh, purification if you're doing phenols, etc. They also offer a brominated resin. Now, the brominated resin provides greater hydrophobicity, um, which is uh, greater selectivity for nonpolar molecules. And that's their SP207 line. And they also offer this in smaller sizes as well. Um, they offer a methacrylate or a methacrylic product. And this is great for um, uh, intermediate polarity. So you could use it for hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic applications um, and also has a little bit of that hillock characteristic for you people that want to go in that direction. Uh, they offer a full range of weak anion and uh, strong anion, uh, weak cation and strong cation, and a full range of chelating resins. So what I'd like for you guys to do is when you have a, a unique application, you have issues utilizing silica gel based products um, look at polymerics. Um, a lot of people, and the reason we're constantly doing, first of all, doing uh, these introductions is a lot of chemists paint in black and white. They're looking at either silica gel or C18 and mostly a lot of silica-based products. Well, there's a lot of products out there besides that. And the Mitsubishi resins offers a great uh, array of selectivities for you to use. So, once again, uh, 
Mitsubishi polymeric resins. You can check out information on our website. Uh, you can give us a call. We can hook you up. We can help you out. Listen, have a great Thursday, and uh, thank you very much.